My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Behind me here, I have an example of every single type of tent that's out on the market today. Starting with two season, three season single wall and double wall. We have a three plus season. We have a four season single wall and four season double wall as well. This episode is all about tents. This is the ultimate tent guide and I'm going over a lot of information. I will tell you about every single one of these tents, the types. I will tell you what's good and bad about them. I will tell you what to look for, aspects to be aware of. So when you go looking for a tent, when you go to buy one, you can make the right decision for yourself. In addition to talking about the different types of tents, we will discuss whether or not you need a four season tent and what a four season tent truly is. This is a topic that is incredibly important because there's so much confusion out there when it comes to these type of tents. There's a misconception out there that four season tents are tents that can be used in all seasons, but that's not the case. They are designed primarily to be used in the fourth season in the winter. To understand what a four season tent is, you have to understand what a two season tent is, what a three season tent is, what a three plus season tent is. And in this episode, we will be focusing on each category of tent. We'll talk about their pros and cons. We'll talk about their strengths and weaknesses. We'll talk about when to use these tents, when not to use these tents, and a lot more. When it comes to buying a tent, it's very much like buying a vehicle. You need to know what you're looking for. You need to know what to stay away from. You need to know what features that you need. And you also have to have a budget, right? For an example, do you need four wheel drive? Would you buy a vehicle that has a knocking motor? And you're going to ask yourself, why is that vehicle so cheap while the other one's so expensive? You can see the correlation between buying a vehicle and buying a tent because the same principles apply. You have to know what to look for. You have to know what to stay away from. And that's what this episode is all about. Before we take a look at each category of tent, starting with the two season, there is some advice I have for you all. Pay very little attention to the labels that companies give their products. For an example, it's very common for like Chinese companies who make tents to say that their tents are for season. It's simply not true. It's a marketing term. And even with companies here in the United States, they will use marketing terms. Unfortunately, folks, there are a ton of companies out there who want to take advantage of individuals who simply do not know what they're looking for. They do not know the differences between a three season and a three plus season tent and so on. It is these companies who are looking to make a sale and they don't care what they have to say to do it. They will use incorrect terminology. They'll state false information and more. A good example of this is as follows. They will talk about a three plus season tent having incredible ventilation. You'll stay nice and cool in it. When the truth is inside of that tent in the summertime, you would absolutely roast because the ventilation is so terrible. With that being the case, everyone, why don't we go ahead and get started with the two season tent. That way I could show you all what to look for, what features to look for, and I could also tell you what features work and what features don't work, or when to use certain features and when not to. This here is a two season tent, and the thing about two season tents is that the companies very rarely will state that they are two season. This tent is from Stan Sports. In the rain, this tent leaks like crazy. It is absolutely the last tent that you want. Even though the company states that it's weather resistant, water resistant, and so on, it's simply not true. Also, this tent features fiberglass poles. It also features a single wall with virtually no mesh. So ventilation inside of this is extremely bad because there's no way for airflow to get inside of it. Two season tents and one season tents are complete garbage and they should be avoided. And the most important thing is that you have to know what to look for. You have to be able to look at the tent and see the features that work and also don't work. With this tent here, it's fairly obvious. You have the weak poles, the single wall, limited mesh. And with channels like mine, there's information out there that will show you how bad these tents perform in the real world. For an example, rain. A little bit of rain and this thing turns into like a swimming pool. It's pretty bad. The reason that I started with a two season tent instead of a one season tent is this. A one season tent is basically nothing more than a tent body that has no fly on it. So think of it as bug protection and that's it. Finding a true one season tent is actually pretty rare. It's pretty uncommon. What's more common are two season tents like this. Think of them as being the cheapest of the cheapest shelters out there. Not only in terms of quality, but features and durability. They are not strong. They're not waterproof. They should never be used in the wind and they should only be used in your backyard. Basically, they're like a playhouse and nothing more than that. Examples of two season brands, Stan Sports, also Ozark. The majority of tents made by Ozark are two season tents. I've called the company, I've talked to them about their product products and they suggest they recommend using their products in your backyard. That's it. Ozark does not recommend that you use their products out on the trail. That's not what they're designed for. No matter what the marketing gimmick is, that's the real world. 
I mentioned already that two season tents tend to be inexpensive and that's because they use the cheapest of materials. You will find that with most two season tents they're made from polyester. The thing about polyester is this, it takes a lot of material for it to be strong. Talking about the average price of a two season tent, you're looking around 20 bucks up to $100, with most tents being around 60 bucks. Now everyone, let's move our attention over to three season tents. These are the most common, these are the most popular, and there are a ton of different types of these tents out there. What we have here are two examples. We we have a double wall three season and we have a single wall three season. Three season tents are the most versatile out there as they could be used in all three seasons comfortably and sometimes even in the fourth season. I will talk about that in more detail in just a moment. Good quality tents within this category allow for excellent airflow, excellent ventilation, they're waterproof, and they can handle a reasonable amount of wind without collapsing. This Big Agnes tent here is a great example of a three season tent. And the design of this is what you will find with most three season tents. You have a body, a pole that goes over the top, the body connects to it, then you have a fly that goes over that pole and is staked out. But there are other designs out there such as this one here. This tent is from Nature Hike. This is the Vic 2, and this is a single wall three season tent. Now the company claims that it's a four season, but again, it goes back to marketing. This is not a four season tent. It cannot handle heavy snow loading and strong winds. And now that we're talking about single wall and double wall tents, we need to talk about the differences between the two because single wall tents have to be used very carefully because they can be dangerous. Single wall tents feature a single wall. It's a single wall of separation between you and the outdoors, the outdoor elements. Generally speaking, single wall tents offer very poor ventilation. They greatly limit airflow, and they also limit the amount of moisture that can escape from that tent. The Vic 2 is a great example of this, and this is a tent that I do not recommend for most people because the condensation inside of this tent is so bad. The ventilation is so bad. This tent is 100% waterproof, but if you're in a rainstorm, you have to seal this up. There's very little place for like the moisture that you're releasing to go. So it forms on that single wall, and then it just rains down on top of you. It runs the walls, it pulls on the floor, and there's not much you can do about it. The only time that I recommend using a single wall tent for trips where you're going into a very low humidity, very dry climate. Single wall tents are lighter weight than double wall tents, and that's because it's missing that second level of protection. So if the importance of your trip is going super lightweight, then something like this could work. For a single trip, you can put up with it, but for multiple nights, this is not something that you would want. With the majority of three season tents out there, you will not find fiberglass poles. They use aluminum. The materials for the tent can vary between polyester and nylon. Nylon will be lighter, polyester will be heavier. And also, polyester tents tend to be less expensive. Nylon is one of those materials that is stronger than polyester, so it takes less fabric for the shelter to be strong. Whereas with polyester, it takes more material to equal the same level of strength that the nylon offers you. Now it needs to be said that there are other pros and cons when it comes to polyester versus nylon, and that will be the subject of a future video. Without a doubt, the double wall configuration is the most common three season tent, whereas the single wall is the less common. You may be wondering what to look for in a good three season tent. The most important thing, in addition to being waterproof, is ventilation. You need to find a tent that features a lot of mesh so that you can have good airflow inside of the tent so that you can stay cool. I cannot begin to tell you how important that is. And you will understand this in more detail once we talk about a three plus season tent. So keep that in mind folks, with a three season tent, it should be all about ventilation and protecting you from the elements. When it comes to a realistic budget for a three season tent, the price is going to be all over the place. Typically good quality begins at 150 and you could go all the way up to around 500 bucks. It really does depend on what you're looking for, what you're after. If you want a tent that's strong, very good quality, that's also lightweight, the price is going to go very high. If weight is not that important, then price goes down. Polyester tents tend to be less expensive and heavier, whereas nylon tents tend to be more expensive and lighter weight. This right here, my friends, is a three plus season tent, and this is a category that really has become confusing over the years. There's so many companies who are now making these, but they're advertising them as three season tents. This tent here features a double wall. You have the fabric inner and you have the fly. It's a double wall. Now, did you catch what I said there, everyone? I said this tent features a fabric inner and a fly, right? That's the most important thing to keep in mind about three plus season tents, the fabric inner. Three plus season tents feature less mesh, maybe no mesh, but a fabric body. I'm sure you're wondering yourself, what does that mean? What's the difference between mesh and that fabric? This topic is super important because fabric bodies are typically found with 
four season tents. It's the fabric body that prevents four season tents from being used in the summertime. And that's because the fabric body blocks airflow. It traps in heat. And in the summertime, that's not what you want from your tent. Interestingly enough, everyone, three plus season tents tend to be less expensive than three season tents. And that's because of the fabric inner. The fabric inner is less expensive to make than a tent body with mesh. You wouldn't think that's the case, but it is. And that's why you have so many of these tents coming out to the market today. And unfortunately, tents like this are terrible to use in the summertime. They're simply way too hot. Even with the door open like this, that fabric there, it blocks the wind. So you could be inside of this, even when the sun is up in the clouds, right? And you could be super, super hot. You could be uncomfortably hot. And if the sun is beating down, it could just about roast you inside of a tent like this. Talking about marketing and how companies label their products, very rarely, folks, do you have companies who make tents like this with a fabric inner that state that their tents are three plus season. You have to be able to look at this tent and say, hey, that's not going to work for me because I'm going to be hot as hell. I'm going to sweat my brains out in the summertime. When you have a tent that has a fabric inner, it really does limit the use of that shelter to very cool conditions or very windy conditions. About the only time that you will feel any sort of breeze, any sort of airflow in a tent like this is when it's super windy. And that's because of the nature of the material itself. It is designed to block wind. It is designed to limit airflow. It is designed to hold in heat. I mentioned this because the fabric material was designed to be used with a four season tent. One important note to make about three plus season tents is this. You would think that they're oftentimes stronger than a three season tent, but that's not the case most of the time. Oftentimes they are even cheaper. The quality of the materials is even less than a three season tent. And just because the tent will keep you warmer thanks to that fabric inner, doesn't mean that it's going to protect you more so from snow and wind. As I mentioned, three plus season tents tend to be less expensive with the most common range being around $80 to like 120. To directly answer the question, when should you use a three plus season tent? Use it in the fall, use it in the spring, and then put it up when it gets warm. Essentially the cooler months. So behind me, we have two four season tents, a Heleberg, which is a double wall. And over here we have a black diamond, which is a single wall. These are very strong shelters and they are designed for the fourth season. They're designed for wintertime and wintertime alone. Using either one of these in the summertime would be a huge mistake. They'd be super hot. And not only that, they're also relatively heavy for summertime use. Generally for summertime, that's when you're doing those long distance hikes, those long distance adventures. You wanna go as lightweight as possible. With tents like this, the opposite is true. Generally the hikes are shorter distance because you're having to carry so much more gear with you. Four season tents confuse a lot of people, and that's understandable. You hear four season, you think spring, summer, fall, winter, but that's simply not the case in most situations. People write me all the time. They say they wanna buy one tent for year round use. Here in the mountains of North Carolina, it's simply not possible. In the winter time, we receive too much snow, and also the winds are simply too strong. They're too strong for a three season tent. The snow loading is too great for a three season tent. That's why I need shelters like this. Four season tents are designed to be very strong, extremely waterproof. They can handle strong winds, heavy snow loading, and they can do all of this without taking any sort of damage. Because four season tents are so capable, they also tend to be very expensive. The majority of four season tents will be just like this one here. You will have the double wall. You have the fly and you also have the fabric inner. That fabric inner is going to give you a lot of benefit. Again, it's going to block wind, hold in heat, and it's going to protect you from flying, blowing snow. At the same time, it's going to release moisture through that fabric inner so that you don't have any condensation issues. The less common tent is the single wall like this one here. This typically is for very quick, very fast trips where you need to go as lightweight as possible. So if you are out for a mountaineering trip, this makes a lot of sense, especially when you consider all of the other gear that you're carrying with you. But you have to keep in mind, this is a single wall tent. So the same cons apply to a three season single wall tent as well. Talking about those cons there for a second, condensation, limited airflow, that does make single wall tents very dangerous in certain situations. You really have to know what you're doing to use these correctly and also safely. With a little bit of misuse, you can be in serious trouble. For an example, if you wake up and everything inside of your tent is soaking wet from condensation and whatnot, it could be deadly. So you have to know how to use these products correctly. I've mentioned this already, four season tents tend to be very expensive. And again, it's because they're built to be so strong, so capable in the winter time. If you see a company that's offering an inexpensive four season tent, you know automatically that they're lying, that they're full of crap. You also know to stay away from that product because there is no such thing. Four season tents like this here, 
incredibly strong. You're talking about the best of the best of materials. Tents like this will sometimes have two sets of poles. It really depends on your needs and the conditions that you're going out into. One should expect to pay for a four season tent, $600 on the low end, over a thousand on the high end. Tents that can be found on the lower end of the price scale are good for moderate winter events. Moderate snow loading, moderate wind. Whereas higher end products like this here, made for blizzards. They are made for big snow events, super strong winds, basically the worst of the worst. Talking about the lower end of the fourth season scale, you really do have to consider what you need in the type of snow events, winter events that you're going out into. What conditions could you potentially face? If you're going out for a nice calm snow event, you can get away with using a product like the Snug Pack Scorpion 3 or something along those lines. That's an inexpensive four season tent that can handle moderate winter conditions. But if you're going out into a blizzard, you will want something much, much stronger. And Heleberg and Black Diamond are example of tents that can handle those conditions. Another point to talk about when it comes to four season tents are the poles themselves. You will find that they are made from aluminum or aluminium. Those are actually the same thing. It's just two different terms. Anyways, folks, oftentimes you will find that the poles are covered, but there are four season tents out there that feature exposed tent poles. With exposed tent poles, those can cause you some problems in the winter, especially when you have falling snow and ice and whatnot. It is possible for those poles to get frozen together and it can be a huge pain in the ass to unfreeze them. You have to take the pole and heat it up and melt it and then fold it up. It can take quite a bit of work and that's why I tend to stay away from four season tents that have exposed tent poles. If your four season tent has exposed tent poles, make sure that you have waterproof gloves because you will need them. As you're holding that pole, huffing and puffing on it to warm it up, all that ice, all that snow will melt. It can be a huge mess. That's just something to keep in mind when it comes to four season tents. Now folks, there is an additional category of tent and that is the expedition tent. Typically these are super huge. These are seriously macho tents. These are designed for like Everest. These do not apply to 99% of us and I will not be covering those in this episode. For the simple fact is I don't have one and I certainly don't need one. One important note to make here is that you have to beware of scams. I've mentioned this already, but typically you will find with Chinese offerings, with Chinese made tents, they will state that they are four season shelters and that's simply not the case. You will find tents like this all over the internet and they should be stayed away from as they will simply not protect you from wintertime conditions the way that a tent like this will. Again, everyone, it's important to look at the tent, look at the features and make the proper decision for yourself. Don't take a shelter out into a winter storm that's going to get you killed or put you in a dangerous situation. You have to have the right gear for the job. Speaking of which, every single year here in the mountains of North Carolina, I will come across a three season tent that's been used in a winter storm and the tent has been absolutely destroyed. And the persons who are using that tent bail in the middle of the night, leaving the shelter behind. You do not want to be that person. You do not want to bail in the middle of the night seeking safety. So again, make sure to get the right tent for the conditions that you're going out in. In this episode, I've gone over a ton of information. So the question is for you that you have to ask yourself, what do you need? What category of shelter do you need for the adventure that you're going on? Do you need a true four season tent? Is having a tent that has a ton of mesh and great ventilation important? Are you only camping in the fall where you need a tent that can keep you warmer? These are questions that you need to consider. And in this episode, I have provided you with all the information that you need to go out to begin looking for the right tent for you. Ultimately, finding the right shelter for you is part of the backpacking camping experience. You need to put in the time, do the research, and make an educated choice. With the channel here, I never sell any products. It's all about information and that's it. I have hundreds of tent reviews where I go over the pros and cons. And if you're looking for a shelter, make sure to check out my playlist. I've reviewed tents of all types and all budgets, ranging from the super expensive all the way to the less expensive. Quality is super important. Focus on quality, then focus on the features. Find a company that you can trust. I do not recommend that you put your life in the hands of a product that costs 25 bucks and it came off of Amazon and it's from some weird named company. You need to take the time, you need to research. That's how I do it, that's how everybody does it. Is the brand trustworthy? Do they have a good track record? Take a look at their claims that they make for their products. Are they accurate? Are they realistic? Are they founded? Make sure to read reviews, watch reviews, and also at the same time, make sure that those reviews are substantiated. For an example, don't go to Amazon looking for real world reviews because everything on there is basically bought and paid for. You have companies who are selling products who hire firms to leave negative feedback for other products, and at the same time, they hire firms to leave positive feedback for their own products. So Amazon is never a good source of reviews. The reviews on that website should be taken with a grain of salt. Now everyone, let's talk about camping in the wintertime. 
and whether or not you need a four season tent. That is the ultimate question. So can you use a three season tent in the winter time? The question is yes, but the conditions have to be right. You have to remember that these three season tents, they are made for spring, summer, and fall. They are not made to handle heavy snow loading and they're not designed to handle strong winds. So as long as you're using a three season tent within those parameters, you'll be fine. Here on the channel, you've seen me do plenty of trips in the winter time with three season tents. And again, it's all about the use. What you have to keep in mind are the conditions, the parameters of the trip that you're going out into. What are the conditions going to be? Is there going to be snow? Is there going to be wind? How much snow and how strong are the winds? Something else that you need to keep in mind when it comes to a three season tent is that the average three season tent is designed for airflow. So you need to make sure that you have an excellent sleep system, a warm pad, a very warm bag, the right clothing, because a good three season tent is not designed to hold in heat, whereas a four season tent is. So let's say that you go out for a wintertime trip, it's below freezing, you're inside of your tent, the wind picks up. There's nothing there to stop that wind from being blown into the tent. You're going to feel it. So you may need a face mask. You're going to need an excellent sleeping pad and an excellent sleeping bag. You're gonna need a system that can block out those winds and keep you warm. So as long as you can do that with your three season tent, you're in good shape. So here's an example. If you live down in Florida, you're doing all of your camping in Florida, the odds are you do not need a four season tent. Going back to the two season tent, again, this has fiberglass poles. Do not use fiberglass poles in temperatures below freezing because they have a tendency to shatter. That would be a big mistake. Talking about using a three season tent in the winter time, I will have a video dedicated to that subject. I will show you all some tips and tricks on how to set up the tent and also protect the tent not only from snow, but from wind as well. So that episode will be coming up soon now that we're moving into the cooler months. So everyone, there you have it. That is my ultimate tent guide for you all. I've gone over every single type of tent, two season all the way to four season, single wall, double wall. I've talked about fiberglass poles. I've talked about aluminum poles. I've talked about the materials. My question for you all is this, what type of tent do you need for your adventures? The odds are you need more than one. Again, in the summertime, everyone, I want a tent that's waterproof and I want that tent to have awesome ventilation. That's what I look for. In the wintertime, I want strength and stability. I want something that can handle a ton of snow, strong winds, and keep me dry and warm. Anyways, everyone, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. Strength and honor, everybody. Take care. Be well. By the way, if you have any questions for me, shoot me an email. I'm happy to help. Bye for now.